Welcome to Understanding Ruby Proc Objects. Here's what we're going to do in this video. First, we're going to answer the question, why should we be interested in proc objects? Next, we'll take a look at a proc object, Hello World, just to see the simplest possible example of a proc object. Then we'll take a look at the definition of proc objects from the official Ruby docs to get a deeper understanding of what proc objects are. And lastly, we'll see how proc objects relate to other Ruby concepts like blocks and lambdas. Let's get started. So why would we want to learn about proc objects? Well, even if you don't realize it, you've probably used proc objects a lot in your Ruby coding. If you've ever done something like this, map ampersand 2s, you've involved a proc. If you've ever seen a method that has ampersand block among its arguments, that's a proc. Procs are an integral part of Ruby programming, although most Ruby developers are unfamiliar with the details of how procs work. So today we're going to see how procs work, and from now on, you'll probably recognize the usage of procs in a lot of places where you previously hadn't. Let's take a look now at our proc example. Here's the example that I've taken from the official Ruby docs. As we'll see shortly, what this proc does is it takes a number we give it and gives us the square of that number. So if we give it 3, it'll give us 9. If we give it 4, it'll give us 16, and so on. The syntax that defines the proc object may look mysterious. We'll come back and clarify that later. For now, let's just focus on what the proc object does. First, you can see that when we hit enter, we get this mysterious looking return value. That is what our proc object looks like. At the risk of stating the obvious, our proc object is called a proc object because it's an instance of the class called proc. This can be proven by typing square.class and observing that what we get back is proc. Our proc object has certain characteristics. Perhaps most obvious and useful of these characteristics is that it can be called using dot call. If we do square dot call three, we'll get nine. If we do square dot call four, we'll get 16. What's of course happening when we call our proc is that the block that we passed when we initialized our proc object is getting executed. And when that block gets executed, the value we pass gets replaced for X. We'll come back to some of these details later, but first, now that we've seen a proc hello world example, what exactly is a proc? What we're going to do now is take a look at the definition of a proc object straight from the official Ruby docs. Here it is. A proc object is an encapsulation of a block of code which can be stored in a local variable, passed to a method or another proc, and can be called. That's a bit of a mouthful. So what we're going to do is take this definition one bit at a time. The first bit is that a proc object is an encapsulation of a block of code. What does it mean to have an encapsulation of a block of code? Well, let's focus on the word encapsulation. In general, when you encapsulate something, you metaphorically put it in a capsule. Things that are in capsules are isolated from whatever's on the outside of the capsule. Encapsulating something also implies that it is packaged up. So when this definition from the docs says that a proc object is an encapsulation of a block of code, they must mean that the code in a proc object is packaged up and isolated from the code outside it. Now let's consider the next bit of the definition. A proc object is an encapsulation of a block of code which can be stored in a local variable. In the case of our example from earlier, we are storing our proc in a variable, the variable called square. But assigning that proc object to a local variable is not the only thing we could have done with that proc object. We also could have passed it to a method or to another proc. Here's an example. This is once again our original proc object example, but imagine now that in addition to this square proc, we have one called double. The double proc just takes whatever number we give it and doubles it. Then we have this method called perform operation on. As arguments, perform operation on takes a number and then an operation. 
For number, we'll pass in a number. And for operation, we'll pass in a proc. And then our method perform operation on will call our proc, C line two, using whatever number we gave it. These two lines at the end will output perform operation on using five and square, and then perform operation on using five again, but double. And of course, for the output, we should expect to see 25 and then 10. And in fact, that's exactly what we see. Here's that code again. And if we want to, we can change this code slightly so that instead of using a method, it uses another proc. It looks a little bit different, but the behavior is exactly the same. The last part of the definition brings us back to our original example when we call the proc object passing in three and four. Let's take a look at that again, just for review. Remember that time when we called our proc object with three and four? I remember it like it was yesterday. Anyway, now it's time to talk about the relationship between procs and blocks. So here we have a method called myMethod. myMethod takes one argument, which is a block. That ampersand in front of the block, that's actually a topic worthy of its whole own blog post and video, which I'll do separately, because believe it or not, it's pretty complicated. But anyway, myMethod takes one argument, it takes a block. And then on line five, we're calling our method and we're passing a block to it. All our block has is this string, hello. On line two, inside of my method, we're saying puts block.class. Now, what do you think will be the output when we run this little program? I'll give you a second to think about it. Okay, time's up. The output is proc. This variable called block is an instance of proc. It's a proc object. What happened was that ampersand in front of block inside of my method converted our block from line five into a proc object. An ampersand will convert a block to a proc and a proc to a block. And again, I'll be covering more of that in a separate video. The last thing I wanna show you is just a little bit about the relationship between lambdas and procs. A lambda actually is a proc, although it has subtly different behaviors. Here we have a lambda that's roughly equivalent to the proc that we defined at the very beginning of the video. Watch when we hit enter. The lambda is a proc. Watch what happens when we do mylambda.class. It's an instance of proc. All the differences and similarities between lambdas and procs are outside the scope of this video. We'll cover that in a different video. To conclude, let's take a look at this definition once again and see if we understand it a little more clearly now. A proc object is an encapsulation of a block of code, which can be stored in a local variable, passed to a method or another proc, and can be called. Thanks for watching this video. To find my blog posts, products, podcasts, and other videos, visit codewithjason.com.